Come on on land. I love it when mega piranhas come on land. <laughs> Go ahead and get all your raw fish meat too, buddy. Yeah, this is th this day wasn't going the way you thought it would, is it? Hello, everybody. Gray still plays, and we're back with more Ark Survival Evolved. At the center, no time for BS. I wanted to show you guys a few things, kind of do like a, almost a little tutorial along with our regular gameplay. Right over here, you're gonna notice something very interesting. This is a Petra oh god, I can't even see because the ground keeps shaping, shaking and I don't know exactly what this thing is called. I know it's called a Petra something or other. A Petronodon. And I am currently taming this. And I will show you guys how you are going to tame flying creatures. Because if you don't use at least some tactics, it is a giant pain in the ass. If we go over here, you're going to notice... I also managed to get one of these dudes right here with a saddle on them named Speed Racer. That is going to be one of our land guys. Kind of kind of quick. Realistically though, what we really need is something like a raptor probably. Okay. So you want to tame stuff. How do you go about doing it? Well, you could beat it unconscious with a club or smack it over and over again with a slingshot, which is a horrible idea because that's what I was doing last time and it was not working. Or you could build yourself a mortal mortar and pestle. Now, what level do you need to build a mortar and pestle? I can't actually tell you off the top of my head. So let's take a look. Mortar and Pestle. Once you learn it, it doesn't even tell you. Well, anyway, you're going to need a Mortar and Pestle. And I know that at level, I believe, 15, although it may be 20, you need to learn the bow. I believe it's 15, because then, later on in life, at level 20, you need to learn the Trank Arrow. Now, you need to know the Stone Arrow before you know the Trank Arrow, but it's something that you definitely want to do. And the reason for this is because you will be using these two items the bow and the trank arrow in order to knock stuff out. And it will knock stuff out very, very, very well. In order to make narcotics, which you need to make your trank arrows, you need to go to your mortar and pestle. In order to make a mortar and pestle, you need to actually put this inside of a structure. So you can't just like put it anywhere you want. Narcotics are made with two things. Spoiled meat, which is actually very easy to get, and I'll show you how in a second. And narco berries. If we go over here to consume and drugs... It will show us that narco berries, we need five of them and one spoiled meat in order to make a narcotic. And then once we have the narcotic, it actually has two uses. Now, the first and most obvious use is that we can make tranquilizer arrows with it. You can actually see it right there that unfortunately, my Petrodon got free. You know what I mean? It, it woke up instead of staying kind of on the ground unconscious. And there's a reason for that. And that's as good because I wanted to actually have, I wanted to tame another one of these in front of you guys to show you how you're going to do it. So, now that we have some narcotics, let's go ahead and make a trank arrow. First thing that we have to do though is make a stone arrow. So let's go ahead and make one of those. If I can find one. There it is. Now that we have the narcotic in our inventory, as well as an arrow, we can go ahead and make one of these right here, which is a Trank Arrow. Now, I already have six of them, so now I have seven. Now, the other thing that we're going to need, because if you try and Trank this thing, it will fly away immediately, and that is absolutely no good. So the other thing that we're going to need is a way to keep this thing from flying all over the place, and that is a Bola. Now, Bola is a one-use item, and basically what it does is it roots a creature into the ground for like 30 seconds. I mean, it lasts a long, long time. So I really won't be using the slingshot very much anymore. So let's go ahead and put the bola here. Now that we have a bola and we have a trank. <laughs> now that we have Ebola, that sounds terrible. Now that we have a bola and a trank arrow as well as a bow to actually use it in, what we need is a dinosaur that we want. So let's go ahead and find one real quick. Oh, quick mention. I almost forgot. One of the things that you're going to want in order to tame these guys is raw fish. The Petrodons love raw fish. So let's check to see if we have any. It doesn't look like we do. I think I put some in the fire, although it may all be cooked by now. Let's go ahead and take a look real fast over here to access this inventory. Okay, so we do have quite a bit of fish. We also have some cooked fish too. I guess I'll go ahead and eat some of it real fast because our food is a little bit down. There we go. If you need raw fish, I'll show you how to do that too in a little bit. So, Let's go ahead and select our bola. The thing that you do with the bola is you have to hold down your left mouse button to wind her on up like so. And then give it the old heave ho. There you go. Take out your bow. 
With your trank arrow, aim right up to the head and let her rip. And usually, one arrow is all it takes. In order to get rid of your bow without losing the arrow, feel free to click on any other item that you have. All right, so now that this poor critter is totally unconscious, we have to go ahead and hold down E. Oh, we can actually remove the boa. The bola. Oh, not boa. Let's go ahead and access the inventory. From here, we need to give him some food. So let's go ahead and throw down some raw fish meat. That will begin to tame our little critter there. Did we take the bola? Okay, good, we did. I was just checking on that. I didn't know if we actually grabbed it or not. So now, this thing will start taming very, very slowly. I wonder if we can grab our arrow. No, the arrow immediately disappeared. And we're going to want to come back and kind of check on this guy now and again. Now, you're going to notice that his unconsciousness level is going to be, like, very, very swiftly decreasing. So we need a way to keep this guy unconscious. And we don't want to just keep beating it with arrows because eventually it'll die. So for that reason, we need to come over here to these various plants. And we need to make more narcotics. So let's go ahead and find some narco berries. We need at least five, but if I can grab like 10 or 15, I would certainly like to do that. We're getting some spoiled meat as well, so that's happening. Oh, if you ever want to get quicker spoiled meat, what you can do is go to your meat, hold down the CTRL button, and drag one item off. And you'll notice that when you do this, the raw meats separate one at a time. What this does is it creates separate timers for all the meats, Instead of having one spoil, you know, from a stack of 10, you'll have each one of these spoil all in a row. So, you know, immediately we'll get like four spoiled foods, which is a very integral part to actually making the narcotic. And the, nar the narcotic is good for a lot of different things. So we are going to want a lot of it. Let's go ahead and find a couple more plants here to just grab some additional narco berries from. It's kind of random what you get. I know eventually you can get a scythe that I think gets you like a ton of fiber but not much else. I like for right now just using our hands because that allows us to get, you know, a pretty good amount of narco berries and pretty much everything else as well. Let's go back over here and we want to make a couple narcotics, so we'll do this again. Access the inventory down here to the narco berries, wherever they might be. I imagine somewhere close by. Okay, good. So we can make at least three. So let's go ahead and make all three because we're going to need plenty of narcotics in order to keep this thing unconscious because it's going to regain consciousness pretty fast unless we keep it to sleep. And remember, on this server, I happen to have the taming sped up quite a bit. So if, you're, if you don't have any speeding up of the, of the actual taming, it's going to take you quite a bit in order to tame anything of any level. Now, we could also get some prime fish meat, but I don't happen to have any. I basically was just killing some mega piranhas, which is something easy that you can kill to get them. Okay, so let's go back over here. Let's go back over here and access the inventory. And what we're going to do is throw down some narcotics into this creature. And once the narcotics is in them, we can click on it and click remote use item. Now, watch the torpor. The torpor here is basically what is keeping this thing out. So if we go ahead and remote use... Right there, we force him, essentially, to <laughs> drink this narcotic. We're such terrible people. And we can see his torpor went way back up. And now, the unconsciousness level is, like, up a little bit more. And basically, that's good. We're going to need to keep it like that. Because it's the only way to keep him down for the count, essentially, while we gain additional items that we're going to need to continue to tame critters. And one of the things I want to do is actually get some fish. And apparently we need some water anyway. So let's go ahead and walk into the water. If you ever need to grab a drink, just go ahead and submerge yourself. Killing fish is probably best I've seen so far with a spear. The spear is great because it does a ton of damage and it's just really cheap to make. It just does a lot more damage than your traditional like hatchet or any other item that you might have right in the beginning. Eventually, when you get, like, metal weapons and stuff, they're going to be better than the spear. But in the beginning, the spear is pretty much the best. When it comes to fish and stuff, really all you have to do is usually just swim out a little bit, and eventually something will start coming toward you. We also want to be on the lookout for megalodons, though. I'm pretty impressed, because usually from what I see in the water, it is, like, megalodon-infested, like, ultra-death. Ah, we have one coming toward us. So let's go ahead and grab a quick breath of air, and we'll kind of start moving backwards while he comes at us. 
Excellent. And we'll beat the living crap out of him while he tries to take bites out of our ass. There we go. Mega Piranha down. Let's go ahead and grab the hatchet to get enough meat off of this guy. Oh, yeah. Something else attacking us? Oh, another Mega Piranha. All right, that's fine. Yeah, come on out. Oh, yeah. Come on on land. I love it when Mega Piranhas come on land. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get all your raw fish meat too, buddy. Yeah, this, is, this day wasn't going the way you thought it would, is it? Now, we have a metric crap ton of raw meat, so let's go ahead and put it all in that Petrodon. This way we can make sure they have, he has enough food. And what the hell is attacking us now? Oh, someone's attacking our buddy. Oh, and you can see there, everyone is pissed off about that. Excellent, yes, do what you gotta do. Protect our good friends, dirty jerk. Trying to beat up on my, trying to beat up on my freaking dinosaurs. Teach you a thing or two, you rat bastard. All right, so let's go back over here to this Petrodon. See how the unconsciousness is doing. He's actually, he's actually coming out of unconsciousness pretty quick if you look. So one thing that we're gonna want to do is throw a, eh, how much raw fish? Probably a stack of twenty. That's pretty good. And let's go ahead and remote use a bunch of this. Actually, we're probably going to remote use both of these. And this is the best way to keep these guys out. You don't want to be beating these guys with clubs and stuff. Um, if you look, sometimes, okay, right there where it says taming effectiveness, see how it says 86.5 and it's going to give this guy six bonus levels. If you beat it in order to keep it unconscious, not only will you go blind, but also you will lose a bunch of that effectiveness and you'll lose a bunch of bonus levels that you would normally otherwise get. So, so that this episode isn't just a giant, giant tutorial, but I kind of wanted it to be just to teach you guys things every once in a while if you didn't already know how to do it. Let's go over here to apparently all our guys were beating the crap out of this poor little Dilapidosaurus. Might as well get some hide off of them. And I want to show you that we started building this house all in wood. And you can see again, I mean, this is a real, real basic house here. I mean, now the only difference is instead of having a thatch structure, we have a wood structure. I think I still need to make a bunch of ceilings, a bunch of wooden ceilings though. I don't know if they're all wood. No, okay, so we still have thatch ceilings. Let's go ahead and check real quick to see if we've even learned how to do this. Go down here to wood. I've, I have like 36 points I can spend. You can see I haven't really uh, learned too much of them. Oh, here we go. We have learned how to make wood ceilings. Well, that's nice. Let's go ahead and put that down in our, our area here so we can craft easily from there. Wood ceiling, where are you at? There you are. All right. So in order to make the wood ceiling, we need a lot of wood, which we don't really have. So something when you're getting wood and other things to just to make things much, much easier on you, go ahead and get a buddy like this little guy right here. I think this guy can actually level right now. I'm mostly just upgrading the movement speed because it is so much better to upgrade these guys movement speed because they're so damn slow. Let's go ahead and make this guy follow us. And essentially his job is going to be carrying all of the wood that we're going to be getting. So when you want wood, you want to switch over to your ax because the pick mostly gets thatch and we're going to want wood. So let's go ahead and start chopping away here. And you can see immediately we're encumbered. So that kind of sucks. Now what we can do though is we can start making these wall, uh, these roofs rather, not these walls. And that will decrease a lot of our encumbrance. And the other thing that we can do is start putting wood in this guy here. Let's go ahead and access the inventory. Go all the way down here to the wood. We'll put all that in there. Actually, we'll put probably some other stuff in him too, just because I'd like to get some of our weight down. I don't really know what he's going to do with raw fish and raw meat because he doesn't eat either of those, but mostly it's just to get some of the weight off of us. This guy's also here for our protection because you never know up here in this little area here, you can see I've harvested this area quite a bit, so there's not very many trees left. You really never know what you're going to find up here. I have found like dire bears and raptors and all kinds of horrible, horrible things up here. Come over to me. Go. All right. Apparently he just doesn't want to get close enough. Let's go ahead and make at least one of these walls here. There we go. Oh, the distance is medium. That's why. You can probably put it close. 
see here if we can set it. Oh, that's the targeting rate. Oh, here we go. So let's go ahead and do that. There we are. So now it should be, or not, low. Excellent. That's exactly what we want. Let's go over here to the access inventory. And let's go put our various items that we've made inside of them. We made two wooden ceilings so far. So you get to hold on to that. You can see how much, like, you can see how, how much less weight the wooden ceilings have. We do have to level as well, which is very, very nice. Let's go ahead and grab all this, actually. You don't usually want to encumber yourself quite to the level I am, because if I get attacked right now, there is nowhere I can run. Give me all that. Wow, this is a big-ass tree. There we go. You can see, actually, from the two next to the little icon at the bottom that we are... What are you doing? Why are you pushing me? You don't need to get that close. Holy crap. Oh, God. What do we got? Ah, the Dilapidosaurus. Take our spear out for this guy. There we go. Okay, anyway. Here and there, we have a couple of problems that we have to deal with, but it's not too bad. It's, at least it was something like that. I mean, that little guy basically doesn't do very much at all. Okay, so now let's say, you know, you've got a bunch of items on you now. I mean, you know, you'd be out doing this for a lot longer, but I think that'd be pretty boring, just like watching me get roofs and such. The other thing that we want to do while I'm at it is we want to see exactly where this Petrodon is. We're probably going to need to make additional narcotics to keep him completely and utterly incapacitated. See where he's looking at. Yeah, you can see the unconsciousness meter there is going away pretty quick. So we are going to have to deal with that. I need to eat as well. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. I'm not going to make this episode any longer at this point. I hope you guys have enjoyed the little tutorial on how to tame flying creatures and really any creature, especially fast ones like raptors. Until the next time, guys, stay foxy and much love.